We have something to talk about. This is the greatest accomplishment of man over the past few months. Despite the world going to shit and sports being wiped off the face of the map, the NFL draft gives zero fucks. It soldiers on, but not in the showy landscape of Vegas, but in the humbling auspices of Roger Goodell's basement. It is here where dreams will eventually be made true, with cameras everywhere from kitchen to basement to makeshift office. Once again, the NFL stops for nothing. By the way, did you know that every athlete's family is dead? ESPN won't shut the hell up about it. First pick in the 2020 draft, the Cincinnati Bengals select Joe Burrow, quarterback, LSU. Mr. Burrow, may you have my most sincere of condolences. Thanks to your outstanding efforts at LSU, you must now suffer exile to the Bungles. You'll argue that it's a homecoming for Burrow and the franchise as their first great savior since a certain Carson Palmer strutted his stuff here 15 years ago. But there are those that merely think it was because of the team around him that he did so well. Me personally, I think it's somewhere in the middle. The only thing that has a chance to hold him back are the Bungles themselves. Fortunately, there is little place to go but up in Cincy. Maybe that'll help. Washington Redskins select Chase Young, defensive end, Ohio State. Another outstanding edge rusher to potentially torment the NFC East for years on end. It's a needed jolt for a Redskins organization that has been deep in shit for, well, a long time. The Trent Williams saga finally ended, much to the relief of many in the football world, but Carolina North will need a new face of the defense. Chase Young can be just that. I don't think even Washington can tarnish him. The Detroit Lions select Jeff Okuda, defensive back, Ohio State. A small part of me was hoping that the Lions would lose their minds and draft Tua, but perhaps I underestimate how badly they need help on the defensive side of the ball. Detroit, meet your big play Slay replacement. You now need a good chunk more to overhaul what was awful last season, but it's a start. The only thing you could say is that the Lions could have traded down a bit, but that's a nitpick. Detroit didn't fuck up anything, and that's a good thing. The New York Giants select Andrew Thomas, tackle. Georgia. Solid, non-flashy, blue-collar offensive lineman for a team of significant weapons that need protecting and fills a dire need. Yeah, it works. Fan meltdowns aside, I'm looking at you, five points. I know why this pick was made. Nate Solder has been a disaster since signing here. The hope is that Andrew Thomas doesn't go the route of a certain Eric Flowers and becomes their best offensive lineman in a long time. He did well in college, but I will he do against elite edge rushers at the NFL level. That's always the true test of a blindside blocker. The Miami Dolphins select Tua Tungavaloa, quarterback, Alabama. The goal for the Dolphins was the relentless tank for Tua, and, well, they got Tua. Although it doesn't have the luster that it once had, I guess you could say they accomplished it. Somewhere Josh Rosen is rotting in a corner telling every passerby about how he's been fucked over everywhere he went. Now he's going to be replaced by the hot commodity and his fragile, fragile hips. You best hope you can protect him or else that alleged injury proneness of his will become a reality. The Los Angeles Chargers select Justin Herbert, quarterback, Oregon. I see another sap has chosen to drink the Oregon Kool-Aid and overdraft another one of their quarterbacks. I could go on about how his underlying statistics say that he's incredibly raw at best, how he struggled in big games in college, and how he somehow shut up draft boards for no reason whatsoever. But I'll ask you this question. Name me an Oregon quarterback whose abilities have translated to the NFL level over the past 30 years. It's because you can't. Oh, you had Dan Fouts? Good job, that was 50 years ago. I swear, QBs from this school are like communism. Their past failures weren't real quarterbacks, but this time, this time, it's going to work. I'll believe it when I see it happen. In the 2020 NFL Draft, the Carolina Panthers select Derek Brown, defensive tackle. Auburn. Big space hogging interior lineman ready to fuck shit up for the rest of the NFC South. Quite possibly the most NFL ready player out of this draft for a team that needs a new face of the defense. I'd say this is a pretty good fit, and he pretty much fell under their laps with no need to move up or down thanks to teams being quarterback hungry. Sometimes the best moves are doing nothing at all. No trade up needed here. Endless defense for miles on end in this draft. Good shit, Carolina. The Arizona Cardinals select Isaiah Simmons. Linebacker, Clemson. Another predictable selection in that Arizona needed defensive help badly. The main knock on Simmons is that he really doesn't have a position, but if a player has talent, he will be rewarded greatly in this league. The question is, will they keep him at one spot or use him as a Swiss Army knife of sorts? Sadly, he can't play all 11 at once, which is what the Cardinals really need on that side of the ball at this time. It's at least a start. Jacksonville Jaguars select C.J. Henderson, defensive back, 
Florida. Jacksonville meet your Jalen Ramsey substitute. It's oddly ironic how much of a match he is to Ramsey, what with his skills and coverage, but one thing has me buck. For a defender, why the hell am I seeing from reports that he tends to not give a shit about tackling people? Isn't that one of the main traits of a cornerback? What good is a defender if he picks and chooses when to tackle running backs? Something tells me this will bite him in the ass unless he gets it through his skull that you need to do everything at the NFL level to be successful. Cleveland Browns select Jedrick Wills. Tackle. Alabama. This one was a pretty obvious pick. The offensive line for the Browns last year was abysmal. It was something that they neglected big time, and the new analytics crew in Cleveland wants to fix it. The last time the Browns drafted an O-lineman this high, it became Cam Irving. I wanted to say Joe Thomas, but Cam Irving is the answer. He at least developed into a serviceable guard in Kansas City. Let's hope that this isn't the case here. The Browns need a blindside tackle, and he was that at Alabama, technically. The New York Jets select Bakai Becton. Tackle. Louisville. The Jets didn't but fumble the draft in the short term. There's always a first for everything, isn't there? Becton may be a bit raw, but he at least has the size and skill to potentially develop into the next Debrick Shaw Ferguson. Considering the metric ton of resources they've put into overhauling the offensive line this offseason, anything less than improvement will be disappointing if reinforcing stale narratives. The main question for that line is going to be in cohesion, since at least four out of five guys will be new to the team. Hopefully Darnold won't die. The Las Vegas Raiders select Henry Ruggs. Wide receiver, Alabama. The first of many wideouts to go off the board in the first few rounds. Ruggs has been hailed as a potential game changer for a while now, and Oakland could use one of those to fill the Amari Cooper boy. Do we need to remind them of how that whole Antonio Brown experiment played out? Wait a second. Really fast wide receiver with strong physical attributes some consider to be overdrafted? Are we sure all Davis is dead? He doesn't seem to have issues with his hand, so that 4.2740 time might be put to good use. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers select Tristan Wirfs, tackle Iowa. Normally I would laugh at a team moving up one position to select a player, but I won't here for a few reasons. Tampa Bay needs offensive line aid. Tristan Wirfs was considered to be the last of the really good offensive tackle prospects, and San Francisco was probably spooking them with thoughts of somebody else trading up to get him. It's also a very New England Patriots move to invest heavily in the offensive line, considering they're adding their name to the list of teams trying to skin them alive. It's not just Tom Brady anymore. Meet the fossilized remains of Gronk. He's been battered by injuries and was a shell of what he was in 2018, but this will apparently put Tampa over the top. When will people learn that New England's sloppy seconds usually don't succeed outside of the hive? The San Francisco 49ers select Javon Kinlaw. Defensive tackle, South Carolina. They get the guy they wanted, they replace DeForest Buckner at a cheaper rate, and they get an extra mid-round pick for the trouble. That's not bad work for the bare minimum of effort. Eight-dimensional chess at its finest. They even got a nice buy-low candidate in Trent Williams to shore up the offensive line. He might not return to what he was as a Redskin, but the reward for what he could bring is pretty damn good. Not bad. The Denver Broncos select Jerry Judy. Wide receiver, Alabama. Judge Judy going off to mile high. It's a match that fills needs for both parties. Judy needs a young quarterback with upside in throwing the deep ball, and Denver needs wide receivers badly. After they traded Emmanuel Sanders, the Broncos had a whole lot of bodies with little ability to separate themselves from the pack. Is it any wonder why they spent their first two picks on wideouts? It's because they needed it. So Denver now has weapons on offense. The question is, will it convert? They at least have wildcard upside if everything pans out, so it's not a total disaster. The Atlanta Falcons select A.J. Terrell, defensive back Clemson. If there's anything that's typical Atlanta, it's settling for mediocrity and second best options when you really want something else instead. All of the Honda CRVs are sold out, oh well, let's get a fucking sigh on. The Falcons were really high on C.J. Henderson, who won a few picks earlier, but like he apparently does with tackling, they chose not to do anything. The only way to get him, apparently, was to overpay for the fourth pick, since there's a big excuse for everything. Unsurprisingly, they scramble for a supposedly lesser option to replace Desmond Trufant. It's not the worst option in the world, but it's the Falcons at this point. Complacency instead of pushing for more. Is it any wonder why they're in the mess they're in? The Dallas Cowboys select T.D. Lamb, wide receiver, Oklahoma. It's just what the Cowboys truly needed. Another weapon on offense when they re-signed Amari Cooper and Michael Gallup at a breakout season. It's a damn good weapon, though. No excuses for the Cowboys this time around. All production and no results again means that certain heads will roll on the offense. I'm glaring right at Dak Prescott here. I'd figure they tried to replace Robert Quinn or Byron Jones here, but I guess this works. Everybody loves sexy picks, right? The Miami Dolphins select Austin Jackson, 
tackle, USC. This is the Laramie Tunsil replacement in Miami in the effort to rebuild the roster in the perfect image. Whether or not Jackson is as good as Tunsil is to be determined, but I get what they're trying to do here. Even if it is a bit of a reach, the Dolphins' offensive line was a weak point and they want to fix it. It may take a couple of years since Jackson needs development, but it makes sense. Now will he develop? That's a different question entirely. The Las Vegas Raiders select Damon Arnett, defensive back, Ohio State. The Raiders, under the power of the former ESPN personalities, have been known to not really give a shit about draft rankings and draft what they feel is the best athlete available. It shows with Arnett. Many outlets add him as a deep second round selection with issues in pass coverage and advanced age at 24, but who fucking cares? The Raiders like the players they like and they'll do whatever it takes to get them. Gruden liked him better than Okuda, for God's sake. It worked with Josh Jacobs, at least. The rest still to be determined. The Jacksonville Jaguars select Kavon Chason, linebacker, LSU. We all know why the Jags used this pick to select an edge rusher, Yannick Ngakwe. He wants out of the Saxonville rubble and badly. Add some Twitter slap fights with the owner's son and cryptic messages about his standing, and you've got yourself a pretty obvious selection if there ever was one. Yes, Ngakwe is still in Jacksonville at this time, thanks for asking. If they're looking to get equal value in return now, they'll probably be disappointed. And they might have to take it. The Philadelphia Eagles select Jalen Rager, wide receiver, TCU. Howie Roseman has made some really puzzling moves in his time, but this draft seems to take the cake. It comes with a disclaimer that most of these moves ended up working in the end, but still, I don't get it. Drafting a wide receiver to wait a beleaguered core losing parts, that makes sense. What doesn't is who they picked. Trying to trade up for C.D. Lamb failed, so here's plan B. They selected a speedster whose biggest weakness seems to be catching the football. Blame his quarterback all you want, but the way I'm seeing it, they just drafted Aguilar again. Want something even more baffling? Apparently the Eagles want a Taysom Hill clone, so they drafted Jalen Hurts in the second round above other pressing needs. It'll probably make sense when Carson Wentz breaks everything by week five again. The Minnesota Vikings select Justin Jefferson. Wide receiver, LSU. Minnesota's played this offseason well, getting a good return for an upset Stephon Diggs and drafting what many consider to be a great value pick as his replacement. Some would say that he's even better than a few of the other wideouts selected, but draft rankings have to be taken with a pinch of salt. It's fun, but it's all they are. Rankings. Jefferson should live up to that hype, though. Then again, the Vikings haven't had success picking a wideout in the first round since a guy named Percy Harvin fell to them. Do we really want to hear about Laquan Treadwell and Troy Williamson? The Los Angeles Chargers select Kenneth Murray, linebacker, Oklahoma. The Patriots in trading down in the first round to accrue more picks. It seems more common than it actually is, but if the Chargers are willing to pay that much, you take it. This kind of guy is still pretty raw, and he'll take himself out of place with unnecessary risks, and you can't get away with that shit at the NFL level. That stuff can be changed after being beaten into you, though. His raw athleticism should help out at minimum. He just has to harness that ability if he can. The New Orleans Saints select Cesar Ruiz, center, Michigan. The Saints just saw what the Panthers were doing and realized, oh shit, we need interior line reinforcement. The line is young there, and Ruiz should help with fortifying it for a while. Interior linemen drafted in the first round are usually outstanding finds or total flops, which means nothing. But New Orleans didn't have many holes to fill, particularly with them hugging the cap ceiling like they are. It's still enough to bring in a special turnover chef to boost locker room morale, and to pay Taysom Hill handsomely for what he is. It works for the time. The San Francisco 49ers select Brandon Ayuk, wide receiver, Arizona State. San Fran needed someone to fill the hole that Emmanuel Sanders left in his stead. This is where this pick comes into play. They even traded up with Minnesota for him. For what Brandon is, he's still pretty raw and has upside, but he won't need to make an immediate impact from the get-go. Just compliment Debo Samuel's development to be another weapon for Jimmy Garoppolo and you're good. The Green Bay Packers select Jordan Love, quarterback, Utah State. Uh, what? Green Bay traded up to draft a quarterback in the first round. A project quarterback that regressed in several ways last year. Look, I get Aaron Rodgers is getting a bit long in the tooth, but taking a luxury pick this high when you have significant holes on the roster? And then following it up by drafting a running back in the second round when Aaron Jones had a breakout season? How are you going to replace Brian Bulaga and Blake Martinez? Hope Christian Kirksey doesn't get injured again? This isn't even an Aaron Rodgers situation where he slid down the draft board, so it's not like it's even a value pick. If Love doesn't develop, this will be looked at as a horrible selection. You better hope that you're right about him. You can point at the Bears and their 10 tight ends all you want, but that's just deflection. The Seattle Seahawks select Jordan Brooks, linebacker, 
Texas Tech. The only thing I can guess is that they're trying to groom a replacement for KJ Wright. The Seahawks have had some baffling picks in the draft as of late, but it seems to not be hindering them on the field. Although I don't get what they didn't like about Patrick Queen. Probably a better scheme fit, but picking a run-stuffing linebacker in the pass-happy NFC West, who apparently has huge issues in coverage? Forgive me if I don't get it. The Baltimore Ravens select Patrick Queen, linebacker, LSU. So here's the player both Seattle and Green Bay passed up on for Baltimore to eagerly lick their chops at. Even if people think he's undersized, he fills that hole they've had since C.J. Mosley got paid. Good, well-rounded athlete with no true weaknesses. Exactly what I want to see as a division rival. Baltimore usually has a knack for finding great value in the draft, and I fear they found some here. Or was that throughout the draft as a whole? God damn it. The Tennessee Titans select Isaiah Wilson. Tackle. Georgia. Jack Conklin left in free agency? Well, here's the guy that's going to be filling his shoes. Many didn't think he'd go this high, but scouts love size. He's a big boy, but a project that will need time to develop, which tells me this is either going to be a top flight tackle in the making or a guy that's out of the league in a few years. Usually when a weak point is being beaten off the edge by defensive players, that's not a good sign for a tackle. That can be improved, though. I'm probably being too nitpicky. The Miami Dolphins select Noah Igbenogany. Defensive back, Auburn. It took me a few times to say his name correctly, and I'll probably butcher it until it smashes my head into the ground. What doesn't is his raw ability, albeit as a wide receiver convert to defense. A bit bold to pick in the first round, but might be a home run if they play their cards right. Although this wasn't as odd as Miami drafting a long snapper in the sixth round. Us Steelers fans remember doing that. He got cut that training camp. Lovely. The Minnesota Vikings select Jeff Gladney. Defensive back. TCU. Minnesota lost both Trey Waynes to free agency and Xavier Rhodes to being burnt toast this offseason. Gladney is their attempt to shore up the secondary in their stead. At the very least, he'll start day one unless his skills don't convert in the slightest. But if that happens, the Vikings are in deep trouble, so yeah. The Super Bowl champion, Kansas City Chiefs, select Clyde Edwards Hilaire, running back. LSU. Kansas City takes the strength and throws even more fuel into that fire by drafting a running back. Yeah, you heard that right. Fuck you and fuck your needs. Running back for a team that's pass happy is the way to go. The only thing I can think of is trying to find another safety valve for Mahomes in the passing game. Because what the rest of their division needed was a replacement for Kareem Hunt. Just as much as the Rams need horrific cap hell and the Texans needed to replace Nuke Hopkins with concussion riddled Brandon Cooks. Have fun with that this year, boys. Remember, they had success with Landon Collins in the second round a few years ago, but there you see a canine resemblance for Bill Belichick, uh, the Patriots head coach, and Nick Casario, the director of player personnel. The Patriots are finally participating in the draft process. Let's see where they go.